Oh shit, I have a bag of Milky Way. Remember the game that gave us that gem? Me neither. <laughs> Before we get into this video, I need to give a special thanks for everyone's amazing support on the last one. Leave your comments below to be featured in the beginning of the next one. And of course, I quickly have to also give a big ol' thank you to my sexy patrons, Dauber underscore, Stin, Dano, Dotman, and Jesse. Thank you all for your fantastic support. And with that, let's get into this horror show. Booting up this game and just sitting right here on the home screen, ready to relive this horrific nightmare. I regret everything. Nearly 10 years ago, Amnesia The Dark Descent was released, and it not only revolutionized the horror genre in gaming, but also took the internet by storm, arguably kickstarting careers out of YouTube for the likes of Pee Wee Didi and Captain Quark. If it weren't for Amnesia, I probably wouldn't be making videos today. It's been over six years since I downloaded OBS, hooked up my Turtle Beach headset, set up my shitty laptop webcam, and started my playthrough of Amnesia. Get used to seeing that turd, because you'll be seeing more of him throughout this video. Say hello, younger me. Well, hello. There. Get the fuck out of my face right now before I strangle you with your own intestines. Tomorrow marks 10 years since Amnesia's debut, and more importantly, today is 21 years since I debuted on this planet, which is scarier to think about than Amnesia itself. With Amnesia Rebirth on the horizon, which you will not catch me playing because I'm an itty bitty pussy. Let's remember together now what made Amnesia The Dark Descent such an unforgettably captivating, gut wrenching experience that maimed all the poor souls to have ever played it. Wait, there's a hard mode? <laughs> Fuck that! Amnesia follows the story of young Britishman Daniel, a man suffering from explosive diarrhea, obviously, who simply remembers his name, where he's from, and that he's scared of his own shadow. All alone, Daniel dazedly stirs to his feet, immediately taking note of the pile of excrement he passed out in, and decides to follow its source. No music accompanying you, no friends, not even monsters. Just the subtle sounds of rain, the occasional crackle of thunder, and a creaking castle as you investigate your surroundings. Daniel eventually stumbles his way to a lantern and to an office space with a letter written by him to... himself. Where Daniel explains to himself that he has chosen to forget, but more importantly, lays out his objective. Go to the inner sanctum, find Alexander, and kill him. Furthermore, Daniel goes on to state that a relentless shadow is hunting him, and he must escape it for as long as he can. So we must now begin our descent beneath the very stone of the castle, avenge ourselves, and murder the dastardly Alexander of Brennenburg in the inner sanctum. Who's with me? <laughs> Fuck that, I'm out of here. That spongy gooey shit is the shadow manifesting itself as a pulsating organic residue that is painful to the t This salmon semen demon is in hot pursuit of Daniel because he uncovered a mystical orb in a mysterious tomb while on an archaeological expedition to Algeria, and the shadow is a sort of supernatural guardian of this orb. To make a long story very short, after recovering this orb, its guardian starts killing everyone Daniel's come in contact with until Daniel receives a letter from Baron Alexander who's like, yo, crash in my crib, I can fix this, and Daniel was like, like, and I quote, hard bet. A lot of the story is obtained through notes, which isn't very interesting to show in a video sense because reading is boring and for geeks. Hey. But please take my word for it when I say that uncovering Daniel's backstory so far, as well as the lore of the world itself, has been incredibly fascinating. Not to mention the disturbing stories of the bad, bad man Alexander really is, and the torment he's inflicted upon others, which you'll learn a lot more about soon. Amnesia has also masterfully built up tension through unsettling ambience and atmosphere, equipped with fantastic sound design and an ominous soundtrack, all of which messing with the player's head and keeping them on the edge of their seat afraid to swing open any door in front of them in fear of what could be lurking behind. Combined with these presentation aspects, Amnesia introduces some ingenious gameplay mechanics, such as tinder boxes which light torches and a lantern which runs on oil. But the most infamous mechanic used in Amnesia is the sanity mechanic, which is literally game changing. Daniel's sanity can alter to four different levels. The more your sanity drops, the creepier and more unnerving your environment becomes, and you can even hallucinate monsters. Your sanity drops from looking at enemies, witnessing unsettling events, and most brilliantly and despicably, fuck you frictional game, staying in the dark for too long. If you stay in the dark for too long, the game punishes you. If you stay in the light for too long, the game punishes you. Amnesia presents a near constant, spine chilling, blood curdling sense of danger no matter where you go or what you do. I am literally trembling here and nothing is happening but I wanted to cry. My body right now is shaking. What a bitch. And this invisible water monster known as 
The Kank is easily the most frightening encounter of the game so far. Younger me, this is no time to be jerking off. Wherever you run off to, the monster will follow like a good pup, so you have to distract it by throwing body parts and books to allow yourself to escape using the various gates throughout the cellar. And when you're cranking this wheel with the monster quickly approaching, Jesus Christ, I can feel my spine shriveling into a raisin, which then leads into a lame old chase sequence. Like, come on, you're gonna have to do better than this, fellas. I've been chased by bears and- <laughs> you escape to the back hall of the castle and tranquility is restored. Oh great, now I'm scared and horny. There's three ways to go from here. The study, the guest room, and the storage, which is a big fat nope for now. So the study is where Alexander conducted experiments, and by experiments, I mean brutally torturing and killing dogs. In the hopes of extracting some sort of energy from them known as Vitae, which you'll learn the significance of later. As you wander around the study, you can even hear the echoes of dogs whimpering, and at one point you even vividly recall a flashback of Alexander conducting one of these heinous experiments, which is just more heartbreaking than words could do justice. And to make things worse, the torture of these poor animals was all for naught as Alexander found their Vitae output insufficient, which inspired him to move on to humans to get the energy he required. Dear fucking god, no, no. No! What we require at this moment is access to the elevator so we can venture further into the depths of Castle Brennan Bob's Burgers. So we retrieve a key from Daniel's old room for the machine room so we can go in and repair the darn thing, but not before being stopped dead in our tracks by a monster, where the game introduces the hiding mechanic, which will obviously come in very, very handy because, oh, that's right, you can't fight back against the monsters. You either hide, run, or die. Speaking of which, welcome to the storage. Oh, hell no. Fuck the storage. This place is consumed by a strange, unnatural darkness, and it is very scary not just cause of that, but because for most players, it will be your first true encounter with a monster besides the croc. All this terrible bull S word is endured just to get some rods to repair an elevator, and then the elevator does its best Tower of Terror impression and rockets downward at approximately 200 miles per hour. And this is where the flashbacks really hit me. Because this is where younger me was scarred forever. <laughs> no, 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 go away. Get away, get away. Oh my God. <laughs> After re-experiencing this nightmare, I still believe the prison is easily the scariest part of the game. This place is Satan's fucking playground. There is virtually nowhere to hide, as you only navigate narrow hallways, with the occasional room to squirm into in case a monster threatens to rearrange your guts. You practically can't light anything because of course any torches you spark blow your cover as well as using your lantern, which isn't really a chance you can take in these slender corridors with the Antichrist spawning from thin air. I cannot stress enough how absolutely horrifying this dungeon is. So to be greeted with a nice open and oddly comforting entrance to the cistern upon your escape is a very welcome change of pace. The game here gives you a bit of time to breathe but of course always keeps you on your toes as you fix up some machinery in the control room and the cistern itself. And then it's time for, oh goody, the morgue. Ah yes, what could possibly go wrong in the morgue? How about a moose on the loose? This is where we are introduced to the second and final monster of the game game, the Brute. Unlike the Gatherers, which are slow and take a couple hits to kill you, the Brutes are... <laughs> fucking morons. The Brutes are very fast, and if that wasn't bad enough, they can strike you down with a single blow. Also, I'm horny again. And I experienced the maliciousness of the moose firsthand in the sewers, which is the second scariest part of the game in my humble opinion. While the prison took all that tension building up through the whole game and threw it in your face with monsters galore, here psychology retakes a bulk of the spotlight. Hallucinating monsters, sound effects that make my skin crawl just hearing them. Walking into a room and seeing the monsters who've taunted you for so long sliced in half, Jesus Christ! And that's not even the worst of it, because at the end of the tunnels, you have to distract the Moose Man and run for your life. I hate this game! The sewer leads to what you could consider the final hub area of the game, the Nave. E. Not the Navy! 
<laughs> After taking a girthy spiral staircase, you meet Agrippa, who despite practically being a zombie, is the most comforting thing you come across the whole game because he's actually someone to talk to. It turns out he has quite a history with Alexander, as he explains Alexander broke his orb a long time ago when Alexander prematurely attempted to open the portal back to his home world. As Alexander currently has Daniel's orb in his possession, until we put Agrippa's back together, there is no chance of breaching the inner sanctum. So now we have to scout the choir and the transept for the six fragmented pieces of the orb, and both are quite nerve-wracking. Well, the transept is at least. The choir wasn't too crazy. There's my hot take for the day. While areas like the storage, prison, and sewer all provided great scares, the transept was easily the creepiest, eeriest, and thematically darkest out of all areas of the game. What separates the transept from all other sections is the fact that it is so rooted in reality. Well, except for the part where there's sunlight coming through windows. We should be like 2,000 feet below the Earth's surface right now. How are there windows, and why am I questioning this sort of logic in a game about an interdimensional being trying to harness the power of a mythical ore? The transept is where much of the torturing by Alexander and Daniel took place. But why would Daniel torture people? Well, in fear that the shadow was closing in on them, Alexander tricked Daniel to torturing people the Baron claimed were criminals repeatedly with amnesia potions as sacrifices in an attempt to ward off the shadow. But really, Alexander was just using Daniel to gather Vitae through torture to power Daniel's orb so Alexander could return to his homeworld from which he was banished hundreds of years ago for unknown reasons. These monsters you've seen are actually Alexander's servants, and they gathered, hence their name, humans and threw them in the castle prison for Alexander to perform his experiments on. After running out of prisoners, the duo kidnapped a mother and three children from a farm not far from the castle and one day one of the children they kidnapped escaped the prison. In fear that she would escape the castle, Daniel chased the little girl all the way up to the storage and murdered her in cold blood. He murdered an innocent child solely to protect himself. And this is the real Dark Descent. Amnesia is not just about evading monsters, it's about a desperate man becoming one as he plunges into darkness in the pursuit of salvation. The immeasurable guilt immediately flooded his body, shattering his psyche. Afraid that Daniel would soon turn on him, Alexander abandoned Daniel and locked himself in the orb chamber ready to begin the ritual which would send him home, leaving the shadow to consume Daniel. Enraged by Alexander deserting him, Daniel swore to kill Alexander for making him a monster. But as his heavy heart was too much to bear, he took an amnesia potion which they normally used on their torture victims victims and instead used it on himself. But before doing so, he left himself a letter to simply kill Alexander when he awakens in the hope of burying his past and redeeming himself once and for all. And that's what makes this the most unsettling section of the game for me. Amnesia the Dark Descent has interdimensional beings, artifacts, and worlds beyond our comprehension. Not to mention the monsters, while scathing, obviously couldn't happen in real life. Then again, 2020's been pretty fucking crazy, so who knows. But torture based off real methods, hearing these people beg for mercy, and the snapping and crackling of bones, the cutting of saws through flesh, and all the guilt Daniel caused himself by becoming someone he absolutely absolutely hates, feels so real, and that is really fucking terrifying. And I wish I could say the same about the choir. Look, it's not that this place isn't creepy, alright? It's got all that torture shite and a gnarly jump scare, but what doesn't click with this place for me is how open it is. There wasn't anywhere you could step in the cellar without the water monster ripping into you. The prison made me incredibly claustrophobic with its tight hallways, making me feel suffocated. Then the sewer leaves you no choice but to face the monster and you just have to run for your life. But the choir? Sure, there's some monsters lurking about, but it's the size of a goddamn football field, and as long as you stay close to the walls and behind pillars, you're gonna have no trouble navigating it whatsoever. It just feels a couple steps down from where we've already been, you know? I mean, it... It literally is. After retrieving all the orb pieces, you get ambushed by some of Alexander's servants and thrown in a prison cell. Hey, Murray! Fancy seeing you here! Through telepathy, Alexander says that Daniel should stay in the cell and let the shadow claim him so that it may not devour the whole castle and his sacrifice may allow Alexander to return home safely. If you choose to do this, you'll actually activate an alternate ending to the game, and I almost unlocked it by complete accident because I'm a fucking moron! But of course, I defy Alexander and tell him to suck my interdimensional dog. And after getting chased by the shadow, we return to the nave and the shadow has completely trashed the joint. But before pressing on to the inner sanctum, we conjure up 
Johann Weyer's tonic. Weyer was Agrippa's apprentice who grew to far surpass his skills. Agrippa, Weyer, and Alexander were all working together to travel to Alexander's home world hundreds of years ago, but Weyer ended up being the first to open the portal and venture there. Alexander did not like this, so he put Agrippa's soul in this thing somehow. So Agrippa asked Daniel to make this tonic so that he could saw off Agrippa's head while keeping him alive and bring Agrippa with him to the inner sanctum so that he may enter the portal and reunite with his long lost apprentice. And we choose to do just that. We take Agrippa's head with us and with Agrippa's orb fully reconstructed, we finally breach the inner sanctum for the long awaited confrontation with the pasty old man as the ritual nears completion. From here there are actually three endings. The bad ending where you let Alexander escape and you just die. The revenge ending where you ruin the ritual by tipping over the pillars, Alexander is consumed by the shadow, and you leave Brennenberg knowing the man who made you a monster has been slain. And finally, the ending I chose, which is where you throw Agrippa's head into the portal to be reunited with his apprentice. This leaves both you and Alexander to be devoured by the shadow, however Agrippa pleads with Wire on the other side to spare Daniel's soul, as Agrippa commends Daniel for his noble sacrifice, saying he deserves so much more. And with that, the nightmare is finally over. And god damn it, I loved this nightmare. Despite my fascination with the lore of any horror stories I come across, horror games are in no way my thing to play if that wasn't obvious enough since I've covered nothing but kitty games. If it wasn't for 13 year old me sitting around watching PewDiePie play Amnesia, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. The dark descent into the Brennenberg castle wasn't only the conclusion to Daniel's journey, it was just the beginning of mine. Because of this game, it inspired me to make my own YouTube channel. And because of that, I've made some great friends over the years, formed wonderful memories, and along the way we've built a nice little loving community here too. YouTube has become so ingrained with who I am that I don't feel like me anymore without it. And that was made very evident to myself when I stepped away from this for practically three years in 2016. Because you could call my return in 2019 my... Rebirth. I am so passionate about doing this, and without Amnesia, I may have never discovered this passion at all, or definitely not at least, you know, as early as I did. I would just like to take the time to thank all of you who have been watching me, some of you for years, you know, those who still support me, and those who have just found me recently, uh, anyone who's just left a comment, a like, a dislike, you know, good comments, bad comments. They've all made me who I am today. They've all made me the content creator I am today. And last but not least, I would just like to give a big, big, big thank you to Frictional Games for creating such an unforgettable masterpiece. And with that said, and I mean this with the utmost respect and all the love in my heart, I am never playing this fucking game ever again.